Good morning and welcome to St. Olive's online service. We are delighted that you are joining us this morning. If you have not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, I hope you might consider clicking that subscribe button at the bottom of the page. I want to thank you once again for your continued financial generosity to our parish during these long and difficult months. Your gifts have been gratefully received and we are delighted that you are able to continue to support us in that way. Today is Remembrance Sunday. We are taking some time today to remember all of those who have served in the wars of this country, especially those from this parish. And we, of course, are remembering all of those who served, but in particular those who died and those who were uh, seriously injured. In a world that feels often as if it is in a moment of crisis lately, it is reassuring on days like this to remember that our country has gone through times of crisis before, and we have been tested and tried, and we have come out the other side stronger. And so today we remember those who have served in the wars of our country, and we also remember that we are a strong and resilient people and that God provides and God will see us through. The flowers on our altar this morning are the gift of Dawn and Karen Weston. They have given these flowers in memory and honor of those who have served their country. Thank you, Dawn and Karen. Our service today is a service of morning prayer. We begin with the opening sentence, followed by the national anthem and the royal anthem. We will then continue on page six of the Book of Common Prayer. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 46, found on page 388. Our processional hymn is O God, Our Help in Ages Past. But first, a word from our child and youth minister, Martha Riddle. Good morning, and thank you for joining us. Today I want to show you this painting by the English artist T. Noyes Lewis. He lived from 1862 to 1946. He was an Anglican painter and illustrator, and this is one of his most notable works. It's called The Place of Meeting at the Time of Communion. Now you can probably make out an altar here. There's the celebrant, there's a deacon, a subdeacon, and a few servers. Notice they're wearing all black. This is a requiem a service where we commend the souls of the faithful departed to God. The purpose of this painting is to remind us that when we gather together in worship, and especially at the time of Holy Communion, we are not alone. We are surrounded by all of God's saints, all of his angels, and all of those who are now with the Lord. This is what today's lesson from the Epistle to the Hebrews calls the Great Cloud of Witnesses. And today we especially remember those members of the great cloud of witnesses who died in armed service for our country. That's who's represented up here. Here we can see men wearing the uniforms of the First World War. And going back, we can see soldiers and servicemen from previous wars. Some are even wearing armor. And they're surrounded by the great warrior saints of the church, like St. Joan of Arc and St. George. Death divides us, but this artist is trying to remind us that actually Christ unites us. He defeats death, and we are now closer than ever. These people gave their lives so that we could enjoy the lives we live today. All the rights and freedoms and privileges that we enjoy living in Canada. This is what our Lord Jesus says is the greatest act of love to lay down your life for your friend. That's what he did for us, and that's what they also did for us. So what are we to do with that gift? Well, if we turn again to today's lesson, it says that now that we know that we are surrounded by this cloud of witnesses, that should give us the strength that we need to cast aside sin, bad behaviors, and everything that separates us from God and encourage us to run the race that is set before us, that is to keep living a good and godly life with our eyes firmly fixed on Jesus. That is the purpose of this gift, that we can live our life and live it for its true purpose, which is to love God and to one day 
be united to him as they are now. Then we too will be part of that cloud of witnesses and we can be a source of encouragement for those who come after us. Thanks be to God. In Flanders fields the poppies blow, between the crosses go on low, that mark our place and in the sky, the, lo the lark so bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns blow, we are the dead short days ago, left out dawn saw sunset glow, loved and were loved and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up the quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw. A torch be yours to hold us high. If you break faith with us who die. We shall not sleep till poppies grow in Flanders fields. nations rejoice and be glad, for thou shalt judge the folk righteously and govern the nations upon earth.
Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Lord God omnipotent reigneth. O come, let us worship. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is our great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is the Lord our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord God omnipotent reigneth. O come, let us worship. God is our hope and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will we not fear, though the earth be changed. And though the hills be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof rage and swell, and though the mountains shake at the tempest of the same, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. There is a river, the streams whereof make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, therefore shall she not be moved. God shall help her and that right early. The nations make much ado, and the kingdoms are moved. But God uttereth his voice, and the earth doth melt away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Who oh, come hither and behold the works of the Lord. What wonders he hath wrought upon the earth. He maketh wars to cease in all the world. He breaketh the bow, and snappeth the spear in sunder, and burneth the chariots in the fire. Be still then, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations, and I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 
The first lesson is written in the Epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Hebrews, the 11th chapter, beginning at the 13th verse. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on earth. For they say, that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country, and truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to, be, to have returned. But now they desire a better country, and that is heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising shame, and has sat down on the right hand of the throne of God. Here ends the first lesson. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to who be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee. The Father everlasting, to the old angels cry aloud. The heavens and all the powers therein, to the cherubim and seraphim, continually do cry. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The Father, of an infinite majesty, thine honourable, true, and only Son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God, in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints, in glory everlasting. The second lesson is written from the Gospel of St. John, the fourth chapter, starting at the 32nd verse. Jesus said unto his disciples, I have food to eat that ye know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him aught to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do what of him that sent me, and to finish his work. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and that cometh harvest? Behold, I say unto you, lift up with your eyes, and look for the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he soweth and that he reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is saying that true, one soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor, other men labored, and ye have entered into their labors. Here ends the second lesson.
members of the parish who made the supreme sacrifice in World War I. James Barker. Thomas Earle. John Greenhalf. Charles Bentley. Harry Summers. Members of the parish who made the supreme sacrifice in World War II. Norman Barbo. Wesley Coleman. Cameron Crabe. Bertram Day. Leonard Dutton. Leslie Dutton. Raymond Edge. Robert Gilliland. George Gould. Donald Houston. Richard Logic. Thomas Nixon. John O'Reilly. Hubert Pedler. Morris Swift. Herbert Stitt. Donald Taylor. Frank Thomas. Henry Tree. Thomas Troughton. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Almighty God, with whom do live the spirits of them that depart hence in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful, after they are delivered from the burden of the flesh, are enjoying felicity. We praise and magnify thy holy name for all these thy servants, who died in service to their country. And we most humbly beseech thee that, at the day of the general resurrection, we, and all they who are of the mystical body of thy Son, may be set on his right hand, and hear that his most joyful voice. 
Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Grant this, O merciful Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive, forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen. And mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we remember before thee all thy servants who have served our country in times of war and conflict, and have entered into rest beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow in their steps, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Our first hymn in this Remembrance Sunday service, O God, Our Help in Ages Past, includes a verse that we didn't sing today. The hymn is much older than the day, but it is often sung during Remembrance Day services. And the fact that it's associated with the day in this way is why the verse is often omitted, why it's considered controversial by some. In the original, longer version of the hymn, it's paired with another stanza. Together they go like this. Time, like an ever-rolling stream, bears all its sons away. They fly forgotten as a dream dies at the opening day. The busy tribes of flesh and blood, with all their lives and cares, are carried downward by the flood and lost in following years. Isaac Watts wrote this hymn in 1706 as a paraphrase of Psalm 90. He adapted it, along with nearly ever, every other psalm, to a form suited to congregational singing. And in composing these verses, Watts's aim was to bring out the contrast between the fleeting temporary life of the flesh and the everlasting help we have in God. In these verses, he picked up the words of the psalmist, thou carriest them away as with a flood, and they are even as asleep. The verses are controversial to some because of Watts's addition of the word forgotten and because he speaks of the dead as being lost in following years. In particular, the verses are sometimes omitted in the context of Remembrance Day, when the fact that we set aside this day to remember and to pray for those who fought and died in the First and Second World Wars shows that they, at the very least, are anything but forgotten. Of course, these lines that Watts composed at the beginning of the 18th century weren't about them specifically, but about the seemingly endless stream of human lives throughout history. The busy tribes of flesh and blood who live their lives and pursue their cares in each generation and then pass away to be replaced by another. Like the psalmist, what means only that the generations are continuously passing from this life, too many to be remembered by their fellow fleeting beings. They're forgotten by us, though not by God, who remains our refuge from one generation to another. And in the hymn, our limits are invoked so that we can better see how all-encompassing and all-remembering God is so that we can better understand our lives in the context of his. Even those things that are so great, they're completely beyond our capacity. The list of names too long for the scope of human memory, these things are in the hands of God, who is from everlasting. And because of this, the act of remembering plays a special role in the common life of Christians. Remembrance Day falls on the 11th of November because this was the date hostilities ended in the First World War. And yet it seems appropriate that it should follow so closely on All Souls Day, when we remember all the faithful departed. Like the faithful departed we commemorated this past week, when we remember the war dead in the context of our worship, we are remembering them as people who, though hidden from our sight, remain in the communion of the faithful even now. More than remembering their deeds ourselves, we entrust them to God. Along with civic acts of remembrance, we recall those who fought and died in the First and Second World Wars in the hope that they would leave behind them a world free of tyranny. We remember that we, living in Canada in the year 2020, enjoy freedoms and a safety that we might well not have had they not given their lives to secure it. Five men from this parish in World War I and 20 in World War II. We do this along with the secular world. But more than that, as Christians, we know that keeping their names on our lips is commendable 
But even if we continue it for another five generations or another 500, it would still be like the blink of an eye in the sight of God. And so we remember them, not only as people who live on in our memory, but in truth. For many, and for those 25 members of our parish, we trust that it was this very hope of everlasting life in Christ that gave them the courage to make the supreme sacrifice. Because they themselves remembered God's promise to us, they were able to give themselves for it. And they gave their lives in the hope that the war they were fighting would be the last. We too need to remember that promise when we acknowledge their sacrifices. The promise of peace, and not only among nations, but a peace that extends to all of creation. It's the promise that God will reconcile every warring power and gather back together everything that appears to be lost. The restoration of the entire world and God's own self-sacrifice on the cross that stands at its center. At the heart of the recreation of the world lies the love that gives itself completely the answer and the remedy for every force that would tear the world apart by taking. This love that will reconcile all things, not by grasping at power, but by pouring itself out. It is a complicated thing to say that people have fought for peace. And we shouldn't ignore the problems that arise when we begin to associate nationalism with faith, but it isn't violence or nationalism we affirm when we remember the war dead. It's this, to the extent that someone has willingly given up their life to preserve the lives of others, they are participating in that self-giving love, the same love that will recreate the world. For this, we remember the war dead not only as worldly heroes, but as children of God through Christ. People who answered the call to follow him, even all the way to the cross. Our special contribution as Christians is our declaration that their memory is not only a record of the past, but a sign for the future. That the end of all warfare and exploitation is not just a goal, it is assured. It has been promised from the foundation of the earth and ratified on the cross. And we declare above all that those people we remember today will share in this too, as part of this redeemed creation. They not only live on in our memory, but they share in the life of God. For all of this, for their faith, for their sacrifice, and for the promise, we give thanks to God.
In our prayers this morning, let us pray for the church throughout the world, in particular for the Church of the West Indies and their primate, the Most Reverend Howard Gregory, Bishop of Jamaica and the Cayman Islands. In our own diocese, we pray today for Bishop Peter Fenty. Let us pray for the work of the Primates World Relief and Development Fund. And let us pray for our own parish, praying especially for our South Sudanese brothers and sisters, as well as Kathy Langston's Hosanna Children's Mission to Romania, for the Second Century Mission Fund and for Hunger Patrol. Let us pray for peace throughout the world, peace here at home, peace in our southern neighbors of the United States. Let us pray for an end to racial inequality, police brutality, violence, and all other abuses of power. Let us pray for those who serve in the armed forces of this country, for their families, especially those on active duty. Let us pray for the sick, praying for Doris, Scott, Beverly, Joy, Richard, Tim, Graydon, Crystal, Josephine, Bernadette, James, Jessica, Annabelle. And let us pray for those in other forms of need, for the recently bereaved, for the lonely, the unemployed, and those in any form of anxiety or distress, especially Fiorella, Maria and her family, the Simmons family, the Sissons family, Philip, Diana, Bill. Let us remember before God those of our brethren who have departed this life and are at rest, especially Jackie Hewitt Pitt, James Madison, Peter Carawang Danu, Christopher Simmons, Eunice Cooper, and on her year's mind, Grace MacArthur. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord. And let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise with Christ in glory. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord God Almighty, who rulest the nations of the earth, we humbly beseech thee with thy favor to behold our sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, that in all things she may be led by thy guidance and protected by thy power. We pray thee also to bless all the royal family, and do with wisdom the governor general, the lieutenant governors of the provinces, the legislators of the commonwealth and empire, and all who are set in authority, that all things may be so ordered and settled by their endeavors upon the best and surest foundations, that peace and happiness, truth and justice, religion and piety may be established among us for all generations. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom cometh every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops and clergy and all congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, our only Savior, the Prince of Peace, give us grace seriously to lay to heart the great dangers we are in by our unhappy divisions. Take away all enmity and prejudice, and whatsoever else may hinder us from godly union and concord, that as there is but one body and one spirit, and one hope of our calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, so we may henceforth be of all one heart and one soul, united in one holy bond of truth and peace, of faith and charity, and may with one mind and one mouth glorify thee, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, the Holy Ghost, sanctifier of the faithful, sanctify this parish by thine abiding presence. Bless those who minister in holy things. Enlighten the minds of thy people more and more with the light of the everlasting gospel. Bring erring souls to the knowledge of God our Savior, and those who are walking in the way of life keep steadfast unto the end. 
Give patience to the sick and afflicted, and renew them in body and soul. Guard from forgetfulness of thee those who are strong and prosperous. Increase in us thy manifold gifts of grace, and make us all to be fruitful in good works. O blessed Spirit, whom with the Father and the Son, together we worship and glorify, one God, world without end. Amen. Most gracious God, the author of all good things, we humbly beseech thee for the Parliament of Canada, the legislature of this province, and the council of this city, that thou wouldest be pleased to direct and prosper all their councils to the advancement of thy glory, the good of thy church, and the safety, honor, and welfare of all people. All this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our most blessed Lord and Savior. Amen. Almighty God, from whom all thoughts of truth and peace proceed, kindle, we pray thee, in the hearts of all men, the true love of peace, and guide with thy pure and peaceable wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility thy kingdom may go forward till the earth is filled with the knowledge of thy love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord of hosts, stretch forth, we pray thee, thine almighty arm, to strengthen and protect the queen's forces in every peril of sea and land and air. Shelter them in the day of battle and ever keep them safe from all evil. Endue them with loyalty and courage and grant that in all things they may serve as seeing thee who art invisible. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and immortal God, the giver of life and health, we beseech thee to hear our prayers for thy servants who are sick at this time, for whom we implore thy mercy, that by thy blessing upon them and upon those who minister to them of thy healing gifts, they may be restored, according to thy gracious will, to health of body and mind, and give thanks to thee and thy holy church. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O eternal Lord God, who holdest all souls in life, we beseech thee to shed forth upon thy whole church in paradise and on earth the bright beams of thy light and heavenly comfort, and grant that we, following the good example of those who have loved thee and served thee here and are now at rest, may at the last enter with them into the fullness of thine unending joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord of hosts, who dost order all the kingdoms of the world according to thy good pleasure, we give thee humble thanks for thy favor and goodness to the commonwealth and for upholding us with thy mighty arm in all the ways by which from age to age thou hast led us. And we beseech thee to continue thy loving kindness to us, that, united, free, and mindful of our stewardship, we may, through thy grace, so fulfill thy purpose that our commonwealth may be a witness to thee among the nations of the earth, to the advancement of thy glory and the good of all mankind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Together we say, Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. 